So in a previous video, um, solar cells from an LCD screen, we took an LCD screen from an old monitor absolutely to pieces, right to its bare bones. And this is the stuff we got. Now there's an awful lot of stuff in a monitor and there is a growing industry in the reclamation of them, but still mostly people are just throwing them away. And for the want of something like 10 or 15 minutes of effort, you can get some brilliant bits and pieces. So as part of the um, backlight, you get a big lump of this. This is acrylic, eight millimeters thick. An A4 sheet of this on eBay, so that's your A4, it's about 10 quid. So you're probably talking about 15 quid's worth of acrylic right there that'll do some nice project boxes. Especially if you reclaim half a dozen of these like I did, and I've got a massive stack of this. Uh, it took me about half a day to do it, I think, to do all of those. Anyway, I've got a massive stack of it worth about 100 quid or so, which I thought was awesome. The other thing you find really of interest in it is this thing. Now, this is a kind of Fresnel lens. Actually, they call it prism, f prism film, but it's also known as a um, straight line Fresnel. And if you rub your finger on it, you'll feel the ridges. And those ridges are little prisms. And what this does is focus the light onto the screen so you get unidirectional light. Now, apparently, I haven't tried it, but apparently if you stick this on top of your solar cell, what it does is it takes the incident light, the light's coming in that way, and bends it and forces it through the solar cell at parallel to the surface. So there are reports of sticking this on solar cells and getting an energy efficiency improvement just by putting a layer of this on. Well worth a try. I, I might give that a go sometime, but well worth a try. Now there are two kind of Fresnel lenses. There's this linear one, and then there's this kind, which is called a spot. And again, if you run your finger, you'll feel that the ridges are circular. What this does is create a focal point, and this is the stuff that people are using to burn wood, that kind of thing. This will not create a focal point because the ridges are linear, but it will bend the light so that it enters your solar cell straight away, even if the light's coming in in that direction. That means it's going to, or certainly the research is saying, but it certainly should, make your solar cells more efficient because you're able to capture all that light from around that you weren't capturing before. So that's massive sheets of that, so well worth getting. And there's other bits and pieces. The thing we were concentrating on were these two bits. This is the actual back plane, and this is where all the electronics have been printed. And this darker one, this is the front plane. This is the one that you look at when you're looking at it. Now, they are made differently. This one, the back plane, is basically a massive pile of MOSFETs, massive pile of transistors. Now, you're supposed to be able to um, get generation from any bit of silicon if you shine a light on it. If you take apart a 2N30555, shine a light on it, you will actually get it to generate about half a volt, um, 20, 30 milliamps, something like that. If there's any interest, I'll do a video on that, showing you how to chop that up and make that into a generator. But unfortunately, these are metal oxide semiconductors. So what me that means is that the silicon N and P junction are not in direct contact with them. So you can't just shine a light on this and hope it's going to generate because it won't. <laughs> now, to be honest, that's a bummer, but it's also the way it is. Now, the surface of these actually looks like this. As you can see, actually pretty complex, and it takes about seven or eight passes to um, place that on. And at the end of it, what they do is they put a layer of polyimide on to protect everything. So this has got a plastic layer on it. And if you actually try to take the uh, resistance of that to see what kind of conductivity it has, you're absolutely jack. You can't, you can't get that to conduct across that plane. That's obviously a bit of a shame, but that's the way it is. This one, what they do with this one is put a black mask on it and then print red, blue and uh, green cells. And it looks like this. After they've done that, what they then do is they print the ITO on the top of that. So right on the top of there is a layer of indium tin oxide. And if we test the resistivity again, we just pop that onto that surface. Sure enough, we get conductivity. It's about three ohms a square, something like that. 
And that's because the indium tin oxide, which is a, a big layer on here, is sitting on the top. The indium tin oxide on here is sitting underneath the polyimide. There's much, much more ITO on this one than there is on this clear one. Um, so it's a question of how to reclaim it. Now, there's an awful lot of work going on on reclaiming this stuff because indium is scarce and getting stupidly expensive. What they normally do is grind these up. They grind them up and then they give them a wash and use a chemical method to actually collect them. And we're going to do something very similar. This glass, incidentally, that this is on also is actually really expensive glass. It's not normal glass. It's an optically pure glass with a low sodium content. So try not to break them as you separate them. But if you do break them, don't throw them away. Cut them into little squares with a glass cutter and keep those squares because those glasses that you've created actually have quite a lot of value and will in themselves cost you a lot. We're going to obviously do something and recoat that glass if you don't, you have to buy that glass. The nearest thing you can come to is a microscope slide, and they're actually quite tiny. So even if you get a broken bit, you're still going to get a big chunk of glass out of there, and that glass will actually be quite expensive for you. Okay, let's have a look at this one first. What we're going to do with it is remove the polyimide coating. Now, polyamide is unbelievably tough. It's captain, really. Captain tape is polyamide. And the same thing here. Lasts up to about 400 degrees C, so you're not going to be able to burn it off because you're going to crack your glass and you're going to ruin everything else. About the only way is to take it off mechanically. Like I say, what they normally do is grind this up. Incidentally, if they grind both of these up, Per kilo of ground up material has about 100 grams of indium in it, apparently. That's a lot of indium. But we're going to do a mechanical method to remove that polyamide coating. Now, it is tough and the adherence is tough. All I'm going to do is take this, the carpet knife blade, and go over the top. And you go over the top actually much harder than you'd think. It's quite hard. And as you take off the imide, you will be able to see through the glass. It'll go from a kind of yellowish colour to a much more see-through colour. I'm going to do that and get back to you. OK, I've put it on a white background because I'm hoping this will show up for you. That bit I haven't even touched. If I take my blade... can see the polyimide coming off as those dark spots and we've got a change in the colour there. Now once we get that little bit off you can use a fine grade sandpaper and even that out and then we can check the conductivity. So on the bit next to it as you can see it's very resistive and on that bit there it's now conductive. So when you bin over that whole thing, then it will end up with a sheet of conductive glass, in which case you can build something like a disensitized solar cell. Lots of videos on how to build those. Dead simple, titanium dioxide on your conductive glass, soak it in blackberry or raspberry juice. Um, on your other piece, put a bit of carbon, put a bit of triiodide in there, slap them together, and you'll have a disensitized solar cell. So you can use that piece of material to make yourself a disensitized solar cell. The bit I'm actually interested in, because I'm a chemist, is this bit here. Now this bit here, like I say, is conductive already because the ITO was on the top. The only shame about it actually is it's so grey. Now, it does have transmittance, I can see through it. It's actually kind of cool because it breaks things up into the primary colours. Um, but it's a bit too dark to use as a solar cell just like that. And there's an awful lot of indium tin oxide on there. It is mixed up with other stuff, but it's on there. Now, if we were to um, crush this up, we could process it, but we would lose the glass. And the glass itself, like I say, has great value. But this stuff comes off much, much easier. And all we have to do is scrape this off and collect it. So this stuff scrapes much easier. You just take your knife to it, And all that dust there, that's what you want to collect. So at the end of that, what you end up with is this beautiful piece of optical glass. 
Now we are going to extract the indium and re-coat it with indium tin oxide because we don't want the um, colour screen. But you don't have to do that. Um, that glass actually is a specialist material and again another one of those stupidly expensive things if you want to buy a square to experiment with. But this could be used for silar coating with an aluminium doped zinc oxide. And I have done videos on doing that. Uh, I can't remember the names right now. Just search through and you'll find the AZO coating method along with showing you how to make a silar machine so that you don't have to do the boring bits. So you don't have to put the indium tin oxide back on there. You can put a cheaper coating on like aluminium doped zinc oxide. And that's well worth the experimentation because indium tin oxide is stupidly expensive. You can get a good azo coating, you're going to make much, much cheaper solar cells. So we get that, which is well worth having and well worth experimenting. And we get this, which is about 0.31 grams of a mixture of resin and indium tin oxide. And we're going to use a method to extract that. Now, the method we're using, actually, is in fact an industrial method. I'm just scaling it down so we can do it on the tabletop, but it's the same method that's used in industry. If you want to do an awful lot of this and reclaim the indium, obviously scraping it off a piece of glass is going to be a real chore for you. We want the glass, I want the glass, which is why I've tried to protect and save the glass. If you just want the indium, all you have to do is break this up into small parts and go through the next steps and you'll be able to reclaim the indium out of LCD screens, no trouble at all. It's actually quite easy and you'll find that in a minute. If you want just the glass to do the a different coating, by all means do a different coating, AZO would be really, really wonderful. If you want something that will do the job, so you can make something like a disensitized solar cell, we did that earlier in the video where we just took the um, back screen and scraped the plastic off. You can use that. So there's a whole lot of things you can do here depending on what it is that you want to do. Obviously I'm really interested in the entire process. So now we've got our optical glass. We can put that to one side and save it along with all the other optical glass and I now have about £400 worth of this just for the effort of scraping for a couple of minutes. And then we can get on to extracting the indium out of this. Now, when you read about how they go about reclaiming the indium out of these things, what they tend to use is concentrated sulfuric acid that's hot. And let's face it, nobody wants to go mucking around with that, especially in the kitchen tabletop. But there is an alternative, and the alternative is this. What this is, is a half molar solution of this stuff, oxalic acid, or barkeeper's friend. Now, oxalic acid does some weird and wonderful things that are just tremendously helpful for Indian, indium and tin extraction. All we actually do is take the stuff we scraped off the glass and chuck it in there, stir it, and give it 45 minutes at 70 degrees centigrade, and it will recover 100% of the indium. Okay, so I'm just going to add that, get it boiling, and filter it. So I just filtered that out with the coffee filter and you can see the resin muck left in the filter. And here is our beautiful indium solution. It's kind of going to cut out of greenish colour. There are no organics in it, it's water. So it's the indium and tin in there that are making this this colour. Now what's really cool about using oxalic acid is if we leave this between two and five days, so five days, just set it to one side. Any impurities in there are going to precipitate out and that's just really bizarre. It's not so important here because obviously we just put in resin and indium tin oxide. So pretty much all that's in there is the indium and the tin. But if you crush the glass, you will get some leaching of aluminium and some silicon going in there as well. Um, and you can't stop that. But if you lose that, leave that, like I say, for five days, they will precipitate out as a white precipitate and you can just refilter it again at the end of five days and you'll have a pure indium tin oxalic acid mix. And those um, white precipitates are all of the other junk that just, just falls out of this particular solution. That's really, really useful, obviously. And that's one of the curious things about oxalic acid. The other thing, of course, is I can get quite close to it without being scared because it's not boiling sulfuric acid. So that's really awesome as well. Now, the solubility of the indium is dependent on the concentration of the, of the oxalic acid. So once you've got those precipitates out, what you do then is double the concentration. 
So add another half mole of oxalic acid in here, and then the indium will precipitate out, and all you have to do is filter it to recover it. Now there's about 100% indium recovery from this muck in here. We'll lose about 1% in that precipitation process to get rid of the impurities, but we'll get a 99% yield out of that once we increase the concentration. That's really awesome. Now, it is a lot of information to cover, I understand that, because we have done a lot in this particular video. This particular process, what I'll do is I'll put the reference to the paper in the description, so if you want to know more about this process, have a read at that paper, it'll tell you everything you need to know about it. If you're thinking about uh, reclaiming indium as a possible business, I'd go for it. I mean, you know, it, it's a really sensible thing. There's a ton of this stuff kicking around. Indium's a good price, and it's, to be honest, dead easy to do. You best get the screen, crush it up, wash it in some oxalic acid, and filter it. Piece of cake. Um, that's really good. So we've covered quite a few things here. We've covered reclaiming the back panel and turning it into a conductive glass just by scraping off the polyamide so that we can use that in things like dye-sensitive solar cells. We've recovered the optical glass from the front panel by, again, just scraping that stuff off and then we can use that glass by cutting it ourselves with the Silar method to make that into another conductive class that we then can use as solar cells. We've also recovered the indium, which in itself could be an entire business. And then once we've recovered that indium, what we need to do is obviously coat it onto some of the optical glass to make yet another kind of conductive glass that can be used in solar cells. Now the process of covering this in indium tin oxide is really quite simple actually. You get a hot plate at 400 degrees centigrade, pop your glass on there, and then use a, uh, an airbrush and spray this liquid onto it, and it will just burn off, leaving you indium tin oxide. Anyway, uh, that's a lot. I hope it was of interest. I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you very much for watching.